मोटर कार्स बाय 1910 द मोटर कार वाज प्लेनली कॉन्करिंग द हाईवे द प्राइवेट कार वाज नाउ पार्ट ऑफ एवरी रिच मैंस एस्टैब्लिशमेंट ऑल दो इट्स प्राइस मेड इट एज येट एन इम्पॉसिबल लग्जरी फॉर मोस्ट ऑफ द मिडिल क्लास बट फॉर द एडवेंचर सम यूथ देर वॉज द मोटर साइकिल अ फियर सम इन्वेंशन प्रोड्यूसिंग एक्सीडेंट्स एंड ईयर स्प्लिटिंग नॉइजेज ऑलरेडी द डिग्निफाइड कैरेजेस एंड स्मार्ट पोनी ट्रैप्स वर बिगिनिंग टू डिसअपियर फ्रॉम द रोड्स एंड कोचमैन एंड ग्रूम्स अनलेस मैकेनिकली माइंडेड were finding it more difficult to make a living the roads which had gone to sleep since the coming of the railway now awoke to feverish activity cars and motorcycles dashed along them at speeds which rivaled those of the express trains and the lorry began to appear therefore the road system was compelled to adapt itself to a volume and speed of traffic for which it had never been intended its complete adaptation was impossible but the road surface was easily transformed and during the early years of the country the dustiness and greasiness of the highways were lessened by tar spraying to widen and straighten the roads and get rid of blind corners and every steep gradient were tasks which had scarcely been tackled before 1914 the situation was worst of all in towns where not only was any large scheme of road widening usually out of the question but also where crowding and danger were all too frequently increased by the short sighted eagerness of town authorities in laying down tame lines yet it was not just the road system that was in need of readjustment the nervous system of those who used and dwelt by the roads suffered too the noises caused by the conversion of the roads into speedways called for a corresponding tightening up of the nerves and especially in the towns the pedestrian who wished to preserve life and limb was compelled to keep his attention continually at stretch to practice himself in estimates of the speed of approaching vehicles and to run or jump for his life if he ventured off the pavement book trade there are two problems peculiar to the book trade in which make it different from any other trade the problem of selection and the problem of stocking how is the bookseller to tell what in an anomalous output will prove saleable before the full weight of unsold items affects the balance of his business and how is he at the same time to hold a stock large enough to enable the public to choose freely he may seek to escape from this dilemma by becoming the passive sales representative of large publishing houses or distribution networks but he is then no longer a bookseller he may take refuse in the sale of safe items to a restricted circle of customers but he thereby cuts himself off from all that is vital in his trade and dooms himself to the mediocrity and stagnation 
on the other hand he may protect his business from the danger of idle stock by speculating on the latest publications but this is a dangerous game in that it impiles a constantly changing clientele readers remain faithful to their own discoveries and failure to follow up a book an author or a type of literature means dismissing the public responsible for their success this brings us back to the fact that books are indefinable the story is told of a certain country with a great many generals where it was decided to present a rare and valuable edition of an old book to a journal about the retire the old soldier looked at the volume and remarked a book what's the point i have already got one 